cetera okay everywhere this machine learning techniques are used for analytics okay so that's why we are talking about that so we are discussing about the types of machine learning techniques supervised and supervised and reinforcement and this uh, linear regression it comes under supervised learning okay <clears throat> so in the last class i have told you about this only so this is the logistic regression model logit of p is equal to beta not plus beta 1 into x okay and uh, so what do you mean by this logit of p that is log the log odds of logit is assumed to be the, to be linearly related to the independent variable x so now we can focus on solving an ordinary linear reg regression so using that we are solving and in the last class itself i have told you okay so how uh, we are just how this p is calculated so this p is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus beta not plus beta 1 okay beta 1 x so this is your recurring probabilities very good okay so which gives uh, the p as a sigmoid function see here when the response variable is binary the shape of the response is often sigmoidal okay so either a s shaped curve or a z shaped curve okay so either s or z okay or z shaped curve and uh, here when you see here now we'll see the interpretation of beta 1 let odds 1 is equal to odds of value okay odds of value into probability okay of that particular value divided by 1 minus p okay and odds of s2 is equal to okay odds of value into okay so that is a um, value into 1 plus um, plus 1 unit okay so here actually when you see odds 2 divided by odds 1 because now we are trying to solve that um, we are trying to interpret that beta 1 okay so that is equal to e power beta not plus beta 1 into x plus 1 divided by e power beta not plus beta 1 into x so when you solve that okay when you substitute those values okay for this x and uh, so you will get okay you will get e power beta not so this odds of 2 divided by odds of 1 you will get e power beta 1 hence the exponent of the slope describes the proportionate rate at which the predicted odds ratio changes with each successive unit of x okay so here when you see this beta 1 okay the exponent or uh, slope describes the proportionate rate at which the predicted odds ratio changes with each successive unit of x okay so i'll i'll show an example then you will understand so please note down this example for example suppose you assume that um, we are making a cancer study and that yields log of odds okay so log odds is equal to minus 2.6837 plus 0.0812 survival rate okay into survival rate and you assume that the survival rate is 40 okay you assume that the survival rate is 40 so when you substitute uh, the survival survival rate here so what is the value what is the value for this log of odds that is 0.5643 okay so odds is equal to e power 0.5643 that is equal to 1.758 okay so this no so this you know okay so from this actually we are calculating this odds so that is exponent of since this is log so this is exponent of 0.5643 which is equal to 1.758 
okay so what it means okay what it means so this is your actually this is a beta 1 so when you say this wh what it means so the patient is 1.758 times more likely to be improved than not improved okay so where this odds it gives you okay this odds it gives you the number of times okay the probability the patient is 1.75 times more likely to be improved than not okay we will uh, we'll consider another patient with survival rate 41 so the same thing we are substituting when you substitute so instead of this i uh, in the survival rate instead of 40 we are substituting 41 so that gives the value <coughs> 0.6455 okay so now um, what is the value of odds that is e power 0.6455 so that gives you 1.907 okay so patient's odds are so here actually so when you when you calculate the ratio so this is 1.907 divided by 1.758 so that is actually how many times it increase 1.084 times that means it is 8.5 percentage better than those of the previous patient even though the survival rate increased by 1 okay initially it was 40 and now it is increased by simply one but at the same time okay so the when you calculate the patient's odds when you calculate the ratio it is improved by 8.5 percentage okay so here using probability p40 is equal to this and p41 is equal to 6560 and uh, so improvements appear different with odds and with probability when you simply check the probability it is different but when you check odds because the formula is different right so that is uh, different okay so it is more better when you when you see this odds it is 8.5 times better than the previous case so another example we'll see see here a system analyst studied the effect of computer programming experience on ability to complete complete a task within a specified time okay so here okay one minute okay so in a study of not this one sorry yeah so a system analyst studied the effect of computer programming experience on the ability to complete a task within a specified time and 25 persons were selected for the study with varying amount of computer experience in months okay so what is x axis x axis is the month of experience and results are coded in binary fashion y is equal to 1 if the task is completed successfully within the deadline okay so within the specified time and y is equal to 0 otherwise got it so what is your y axis so the success in task whether they are able to complete the task or not within the specified time okay so this is your y axis so this will be either if they are not able to complete that is marked as 0 and if they now if they are able to complete then that will be uh, that will be taken as one okay so accordingly they have plotted and uh, see here when you see the when you see here when the experience okay so when you draw a scatter plot and the lowest curve the programming task example when you see here initially it was zero okay and after that when the months of experience um increases okay so if there is no experience automatically they are not able to complete when the number of um, months increases okay the month of experience increases automatically they were able to complete okay they were able to complete their task on time so see here we'll see an example the same thing we are continuing okay so result from a standard package okay so here beta not is equal to minus 
zero five nine seven and beta one is equal to zero point one six one five. So estimated logistic regression function that is equal to p is equal to one by we know this equation right? We know this equation that is beta naught. Okay, minus actually since um actually uh, uh, it is actually beta naught. Your p is equal to one by one plus e power. Okay, e power <coughs> beta naught plus beta one into x. Okay, beta one into x. So that minus of will take no. So because we take minus of, now this becomes plus and this becomes minus. Okay, so that's what has been changed. So since this beta naught is minus, this becomes minus plus. So it is one by one plus e power three point zero five nine seven. Okay, minus zero point one six one five x. Got it? And uh, for example, the fitted value for x is equal to fourteen s. Assume that x is forty. Assume that x is forty. Okay. So, what is the probability? What is the what when you apply when you substitute fourteen, okay, for x, then you are getting zero point three one. So, the estimated probability that a person with fourteen months experience will successfully complete the task. So, this is the probability, okay, for a person with experience fourteen months, okay. So, that means less probability, right? So, fourteen months will um. Will successfully complete the task. We know that the probability of success increases sharply with experience. Okay, so odds ratio. When we calculate this odds ratio, so the exponent of beta one is equal to e of zero point one six five. This is your beta one value. Okay, so that is equal to one point one seven five. So here, when we check odds value, okay, so it increases by seventeen point five percentage with each additional month of experience, okay, with each additional month of experience. So you, a unit increase of one month is quite small, and we might want to know the change in odds for a longer difference in time. So for c units of x, okay, it is exponent of c into beta one. Suppose we want to compare the individuals with relatively little experience to those with extensive experience. Say, for example, ten months versus twenty-five months. We wanted to calculate. So here, what is C? That is the difference is actually the change in odds. Okay, that is fifteen, right? So because twenty-five minus ten, that is fifteen. C is equal to fifteen. So what is the odds um, odds ratio? That is E power. Okay. Fifteen into c is fifteen into the c is fifteen into beta one. Beta one is zero point one six one five. That is equal to eleven point three. So odds of completing the task increases eleven fold. Okay, increases eleven fold when the experience increases. Okay. So this is one example. So actually. um how the slope or how this odds value it has an impact okay on the um, result so yeah, another example so in a study of effectiveness of coupons offering a price reduction okay so here actually when you see here 1000 homes were selected and coupons were mailed so they wanted to check okay they wanted to check the price reduction as well as the proportion redeemed okay so what they have done they have uh, chosen some thousand homes and coupons were mailed okay so the coupon price reduction is 5 10 15 20 and 30 dollars so 200 so uh, with the different combinations okay so they have for some people they have offered 5 percentage reduction 10 dollars reduction 15 dollars 20 dollars 30 dollars etc okay so this x axis is the price 
reduction in dollars and 200 homes are assigned at random to each coupon value and the x is the amount of price reduction and y is the binary value variable indicating whether or not coupon was redeemed okay so they have given some coupon they wanted to find out whether it has an impact or not so because um, you can find out right rd sale this sale that sale they give some uh, coupons right they uh, they provide some offers 50 percentage reduction 5 percentage reduction like that when they offer is it useful or not whether the people uses that or not okay because of that your sales increases or not so um, to predict that okay so they are just doing an analysis see here when the amount is less the number of people okay the percentage or the proportion of redemption that particular coupon is very less but at the same time when the amount is high okay so automatically the proportion of redeemed is increasing so here we'll see the fitted response function okay so the fitted response function so we have to we have, actually we should understand that the equation does not change okay so so this y is equal to mx plus c so this is what we are just uh, writing in case of logistic regression we write in terms of e power okay minus of so like that we are writing okay so our aim is to find the correct beta 1 and beta uh, beta not and beta 1 such a way that the curve okay the curve fits um, appropriately okay fits properly the curve fits properly okay so here actually beta not they have taken as uh, minus 2.04 and beta 1 0.097 you got it so the odds ratio is exponent of beta 1 that is equal to e power 0.097 that is equal to 1.102 so odds of a coupon being redeemed or est estimated to increase by 10.2 percentage with each One yeah, that is uh, each one dollar increase in the coupon value. That is one dollar in price reduction. So when the ready moves one dollar automatically, how many percentage of reduction? How many percentage of people redeemed that or used that offer is ten point two percentage of people. Okay, so this is how we can predict. Okay, how many people will use that? Okay, like that. so for each value of x you may not have probability but rather a number of x comma y pair for which you can extract the frequencies and hence the probabilities okay so this is your raw data and the probability data p is equal to 1 so the third entry is number of occurrence in the raw data okay so here actually the third entry is the number of occurrence of the raw data we'll we'll go we'll see another example i think some of you might have done project also some students have done so here we are going to predict the coronary heart disease okay so this is the data set we have so this is the age group okay so they have totally they have selected eight age group so the first age group is um, age group 20 to 29 30 to 34 35 to 39 40 to 44 so from the age group 20 to 69 they have taken okay so totally eight age groups they have taken and um, then this is the data about those age groups in age group 1 uh, 9% uh, do not have coronary heart, uh, heart disease only 1% is having uh, heart disease okay so total actually Uh, you see here in this case uh, in in age group 30 to 34 13 uh, they don't have any uh, disease only two is having disease but at the same time see age group 7 okay so out of 17 13% has coronary disease so here you can see some correlation and relation okay so when the age increases okay so this is getting this uh, this probability is also getting increased now 
I will uh, will find out the probability of coronary disease. Okay, probability of coronary disease. So based on that, okay, based on this value, actually we are calculating. Okay, out of ten, only one. Right, out of ten, only one. So what is the probability? One by ten. Right. So point one, that is the probability. Got it? What is odds? One minus p is odds. Please remember all this formula. Okay. Please remember all this formula. What is odds? So this formula you remember. Then only you will understand why what I am talking about. Otherwise everything will be Greek and Latin. Okay. See here. Can you see here? You know what is odds, right? So that is p by one minus p. Okay, odds is p by one minus p. That is odds. Okay, and this log it is log of p is beta naught into beta naught plus b one plus uh, b one into x. Okay, so this you please try to remember that. Okay. Now you calculate. Okay. So similarly, for all the values of the previous table, they have calculated. Okay. And this is actually log of odds. That means e power this. Okay. So this value is calculated. And then this is the number of occurrence. So this is the total. Okay. So this is the total number of the that is frequency. Right, ten, fifteen, twelve, fifteen, thirteen. This one. So how they are calculating this um, uh, odds? P minus, okay, P by one minus P. Okay, so based on that, that has been calculated. And now, so this is age group. Okay, so this is the age group. Okay, this is your X and this is your Y. That is log of odds. And we are calculating x square as well as x y, and this is the number of occurrence. Okay, see here when you see the graph. So the sum reflects the number of occurrences. So sum of x is equal to x one, okay, x one dot number of occurrence into x one plus x two dot number of occurrence into x two. Okay, so that has to be uh, the, that that you have to calculate. So that is your sum of x. This is what is this? This is your sum of x. So how the sum of x is calculated? X one. Okay, x one into number of occurrence of x one. So what is number of so one x one is one into ten. Okay, plus two into fifteen plus three into twelve. Okay, so like that it has been calculated. So you you are getting four four eight. So now we'll see the results from regression. So in that case, beta naught is equal to minus two point eight five six. And beta one is equal to zero point five five three five. Got it? So actually, you are calculating from this. Okay, you are calculating from this. So uh, that is already we have seen uh, the formula for calculating beta naught and beta one. That formula we have applied and we have calculated beta naught as well as beta one. Okay. And uh, so this is the age group, and so probability of coronary heart disease is equal to one. Okay. And uh, this is the estimated probability. This is the actual or observed probability, and this is the estimated probability. Okay. So now you have to calculate the SSC, TSS, as well as R2. Okay. So what I have told you, if this R2 is close to one, in that case, it has been fitted well. Okay. Your curve has been fitted well. Okay. 
so here it is 0.99 that means some exactly okay so somewhat it has been fitted so your curve will be proper okay when you draw a curve it will fit the line properly okay so when you draw the line with this values that is observed values your line will be exactly no, not exactly if it is exactly that then r2 is equal to 1 so it is not 1 okay but uh, it will be a best uh, fit since it is 0.99 so like this you have to check and if you are not satisfied with this value then you have to reiterate to find out the value for beta not and beta 1 okay so you have to modify that and you have to find another line okay so for assume that this is uh, your be uh, a line for this beta not and beta 1 and if it is not set okay assume that it has not fit well okay so in that case you have to try another line okay you have to try another line so that means you have to choose or you have to decide on this beta 1 and beta not properly you got it so i hope uh, you might have understood about this logistic regression properly and normally for uh, predicting we use this okay normally for predicting we use this for example already you know the stock market values okay La that is the um, previous values you know so you can predict uh, tomorrow what will be the price similarly Uh, the land price or whatever it is, gold price, etc. Okay, so if you wanted to predict, so or uh, in that case you can apply this regression techniques to predict. Okay, so it is supervised learning. Why it is supervised learning? Because already we have a training set, and we know the labels also. Okay, so it is it comes under supervised learning. And um, next topic is about decision support system. Uh, but i think uh, now we don't have time so in the next class i will take this decision support system it is also very interesting okay uh, so mainly we'll discuss about the concept of decision trees okay um this is also one of the classification technique we'll discuss about this in the next class so mainly we'll discuss about um, what is a decision tree how it works and what are the uses of decision tree and how this decision tree works or how it classifies the data mainly uh, in this decision tree um, the concept we use is about entropy okay so we'll see Uh, about what do you mean by entropy the basic concept of entropy in information theory as well as we'll discuss about the mathematical formulation of entropy and the calculation of entropy of a training set okay calculation of um entropy of a training set and also there are different types of decision tree uh, so uh, we'll discuss about this id3 cart c4.5 c5.0 like that number of decision trees are that so we will discuss about that as well okay uh, so with this uh, we can stop now because when i start i cannot complete this topic so in the next class i will teach this okay and uh, now all of you please go to your google classroom all of you go to your google classroom log in okay join your google classroom so in that for uh, chat bot okay i have shared a link right i have shared a link for choosing the group only i have seen two or three people have done that others kindly complete it now make it fast before this class try to complete that i have shared an excel sheet right i have shared a spreadsheet now i'll post it in the chat box as well okay so please log into that and fill the values
only two groups have filled and i appreciate those people sara joshua vincent one more group i have seen who they have deleted buddy aya christina nikita chris jonathan tracy guys etc very good okay others also kindly please enter okay at least you enter the groups ma'am just discuss with your friends and kindly fill it please log in and uh, please do that see here i will show the i will share my screen yes we ma'am uh, i you can discuss and we can fill it now see nobody has done it it is empty the google sheet is empty so please do that and one more thing is see here i have given two assignments right quality and uh, the resources i have uh, shared here so please you, you can refer this okay so here i have given so many links okay you can go through that ma'am your screen is not visible my screen is not visible no ma'am it is still in the ppt yes. slide one minute but for me it is showing one minute 